My biggest takeaway was right in the beginning mm -hmm. after the uh, story about the bakery and he's talking to this, this baker that said, she says, listen, you know, was is over. Everything we remember from before is now done. Right. New world, accept it, move on. Spoken like a true entrepreneur yeah. who has decided to make a pivot in her business. Mm -hmm. Brad said he doesn't know if was is over, but what he does know, I love this quote we mm -hmm. were talking about before. Mm -hmm. Life gets better when we let go of ideas of what we expect things to be. Yeah. Right? Yeah, there's a, there's a, I mean, that's. You had another quote that was similar to that. Expectations, he also said, can be a problem zone for human beings. I always talk about that too. Like even in relationships, life, your team, your, yep. you know, whoever, people you're working, whatever. If you're not over communicating what the expectations are, if you're not letting it be very clear mm -hmm. what your expectations are, then somebody else is going to have a different expectation of what they expect out of you. And when people are guessing or making up expectations in their own head, I agree with Brad, right. that's a huge problem zone. Well, again, it's all about, I think right now it's it's managing disappointment and managing what you can yeah, manage. Bringing that back to the client. Right, exactly. Right? You don't want them having expectations uh, that are different from the reality in the market or, or different from how the transaction's going to be. Mm -hmm. um, I tell Ness to go on mute and how my computer's making noises at me. Yeah. Reality is a lot more interesting than fantasy. Huh? Hmm. How about that one? How about it? How about that for a well, mic drop? Right now, I feel like anything can happen, right? You th feel like reality is a fantasy? No, no, it's more interesting. It's saying it's more interesting than fantasy. I agree. Yeah, well, right I just now. Think there's a lot of people that are unfortunately stuck in the mud because of what we've gone through since right. March, meaning... They're just thinking about how they want their life to be. They're fantasizing about what they will do one day instead of taking action in reality. Well, I think the biggest problem right now, though, is people are also mourning the loss of what was, mm. too. Where well, it's over. I feel like enough time has gone by where, it, you know, you yeah, can't I, you can't look back and, and, and wonder what was or what could have been or what August supposed to look like. I mean, like what would you be or, mourning? Like, you lost, say you lost your job. So you're well, somebody who lost your job. No, but you're just more, you you're mourning life. Like my children's lives. Like even last night. Like well, your children are alive. Right. But they're also, they're sad. Like they're sad about the fact that they can't do the things that they're used to doing. They can't see the people that they're used to seeing that they don't go back. They don't get to go back to school. Like they, like they, I know, like they were. Think about the perspective of what other kids across the world I, go through I, every I, single day. I 100% yeah. agree with you, but you also, as an agent though, you, ha you, ha you have to be empathetic. You have to understand what it is that everyone's going through. But I do think that with that being said, there does come a time and a moment where you do have to free can pull up your skirt and like oh, move yeah. on. I mean, yeah. people that have lost their job during this, uh, you know, it's unfortunate, but the minute you lose your job, your job is you have a job immediately the next minute. It's, it's to, to get, get a, a job. new job. Right. Your job is to get a new job immediately and you can hit the pavement. Even in this health crisis, you can look at the job reports. People are getting hired every single day in this country. So there's not a lot of excuses. I think mourning to me is a word when, when you lose a a loved one. I don't, I don't really see mourning in this situation personally. Yeah. Uh, respect where you're coming from, of yeah. course. And when we think about our clients, right? When we bring it all the way back to real estate here and I think about our clients, mm -hmm. like, yeah, what was like, you could have gotten a deal in February. Like I was talking to Heidi who, who works with us on the team. She closed on her home, I think yes. in March or February. She killed it. She, I and mean, she her, could sell it probably. Well, her, her neighbor's listing for like 7,500K more than what she bought and they've got like one less bathroom, like perfect timing, but you can't go back in time. You could have gotten a deal in January, February comparison yeah. to where the market is today, but that's not reality. You're living in fantasy the minute you start thinking right. about how great February was, was for your life. Yeah. Confusion, right? And because the markets move so fast, Brad says confusion brings a thirst for information. So as agents, as real estate professionals, brokers, teams, and agents, mm -hmm. we have got to fill that thirst. We've got to hydrate people right. with the information. Oh, you feel good about that one. That was a good I, one. I just made that one up on the you fly did. there, Nicole. You killed hydrate. it. Hydration for thirst. Did okay. It. Uh, Nikki on our team sent me a TikTok message. It was a TikTok because I love sparkling water. This doctor was saying that 
sparkling water doesn't hydrate you the same way as flat water. I guess I wouldn't be surprised to hear that. Oh, it's, it's ridiculous. Bubbly it and it like puts too much pressure on the bladder and it, and, it, and, it, and it basically flows through your system without absorbing the water, I guess. You're supposed to drink, according to this doctor on TikTok, wow. this is where I'm getting Is this where we're going? This is advice. where we're heading? You're supposed to drink one sparkling water to three or four flat waters. That's supposed to be the ratio. You're supposed to do sipping throughout the day, chugging. I would just chug about eight or nine sparkling waters a day. So I was completely not hydrating the right way. Hmm. So, which may, means that's why I'm always thirsty for sparkling water. Just a little fun fact for you there. Hmm. Not from Brad, but that's just from my own, I don't know. You just wanted to hear yourself talk a little bit? Uh, technology. He, he made it a point to speak directly to all of the technology entrepreneurs that were following Inman Connect. Mm -hmm. Don't let the critics discourage you. Right. All right. He wants to make sure that every step of the virtual experience becomes possible for the end consumer. So he wants people to fight through like Rich Barton did when they told Rich Barton that Zillow wasn't going to work, right? How many people have said Zillow's going to fail? Zillow's going to go bankrupt. Stock's at 80 bucks now, folks. I've been saying that. You can go back into the, I don't know, into like the episode 30s and 40s if you want to see some of that stuff. I told you to buy it at like 20 something dollars and, and it's now at 80 a little fun fact. Thank you, Nicole. Mm -hmm. I was waiting for that. Mm -hmm. All right. So you spoke directly to the tech people, but here's the big punchline. Our value has never been more obvious as real estate agents. Ethics and service, he said, are the values that are rewarded today. Do you agree? Absolutely. 100%. Yeah. I mean, I think now more than ever, people are looking for guidance and going to a professional to help them sort of navigate this. And again, it's not even necessarily about, because I, I think some people would argue that our jobs are easier now than ever because like we're just getting multiple offers. But I do think that it's harder than ever. You know, you have to sort of sift through all these buyers. You have to sift through. This is a harder market oh, if you're absolutely. working with buyers. Well, if you're working with buyers, for sure. I mean, because you're just losing everything. But even as a seller, though, I mean, who is the right buyer? What is their job? I mean, there are so many more questions that you need to ask during this process than like you ever did before. Um, or again, agents that are new and didn't know what questions to ask, obviously are, are not really able to, you know, yeah, if you're learning productively on, the, help. on the fly right yeah. now, you might want to think about joining a team that offers training every single day that offers a sounding board People so that you to can help support you yeah, throw these w weird scenarios. I mean, there are so many weird scenarios. People are getting offers under contract and then getting other offers that come in 20,000 over the one, the seller just signed. Like, how do I navigate? Like all these weird things that are happening in our markets right, right. Uh, and you have to you have to be really good at navigating though their emotions too mm -hmm. this is a wildly emotional time like you said before like there, there's so much confusion and people really don't know you know what is coming next and what is and what is coming at their family so yeah. that's the i feel like that's the biggest part of our jobs right now though is to you know it, help them with it, that it's this last line i wrote down from brad too it's understanding what matters most all right what matters most for your business right now focus on the important things but what matters most to your clients is going to be very important to continue to navigate 2020 so good stuff brad i, it I mean good. it was only six minutes but i, I it thought was a, a it, feel it good a, woo yeah. woo in my zoom room it was a powerful six minutes it was great Six or seven. I'll give you seven minutes. So six and change. 